Okay, I think that we can get started. Um, everyone, welcome to our webinar series, Beyond the Buzz, Practical Guide to AI and Marketing. I'm Royce Harada, um, the Director of Digital Marketing here at Artform, and I'm joined here with CEO of Artform and founder, Janet Waring. So, you know, we've heard a lot about AI now. We've been wowed by all of its capabilities. We keep seeing it grow, but one thing that we want to really talk to you about today is how to use this practically. We want to give you some guidelines on what you can begin doing right now, today, right after this webinar that can help you begin to um, increase awareness of your brand. It can help you with your content marketing. You can just do a whole bunch with your marketing campaigns and advertising. So uh, before we dig in, I wanted to just start with a stat here, uh, which is that 26% of organizations are using AI for marketing and sales, while 22% are specifically using conversational AI or virtual assistants in 2023. Now, we believe that this is going to grow exponentially um, since there are new capabilities every day in generative AI. And every day, it seems like there are different platforms and different project management tools that begin to implement or integrate AI into their models. Uh, top five uses for generative AI, according to Marketers Worldwide, May 2023 data. Um, so unsurprisingly, you know, the first two, we have basic content creation, um, writing copy, um, something that was interesting is inspiring creative thinking. So uh, people are actually looking to it to kind of spark that creativity. Um, yeah, I would much rather look at something and respond to it than stare at a blank piece of paper. So I'm, I am loving generative AI for that, for sure. <laughs> All right. All right, um, wanted to kick this over to you all before we get into the meat of the presentation. So if you are, how are you currently using AI? You can go ahead and just throw that in the chat. And if you can't think of anything right now, feel free to just throw it in the chat um, as we're going through the slides. So I'll give you one more stat here. Um, Gartner predicts that 30% of outgoing marketing messages from large organizations will be generated by AI. Um, by 2025, so in just a couple of years. So let that sink in. Oh, right. we have a there's, couple of, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say there's further data on this that consumers don't mind if it's AI generated as long as people let them know it's AI generated and it's still giving them the information they want, which I think is really important to know. Mm -hmm. And we have some ideas here or some ways that people are using it um, so far. So blog content, idea generation, copy, editing checks, proposal help, ideation. Yeah. A lot of these we will be going through today as well. AI for aspire, um, aspiring ideation to add to my basic ideas. Perfect. All right. Um, so before we get into the actual meat of the, um, the presentation, want to zoom out just a little bit um, and talk about the basics of generative AI. So what is it? You know, so at its core, uh, generative AI is a specialized branch of artificial intelligence, but its magic lies in its ability to craft new data, closely mirroring um, a provided data set by you, the user, the end user. So think of it kind of as a bridge between data and creativity in today's digital landscape. And we will reiterate this a few times throughout the presentation, but I really want to stress that AI is wonderful, it's great, but it should always use that human eye for factual um, and contextual assessment. All right, and we've seen uh, generative AI in action, but how does it work? Uh, we can dive into this a little bit. There are three types of generative AIs. First and foremost, we have the uh, generative adversarial networks. So you can think of this practically as an artist and a judge. So um, think of it as two sets. Um, one of the one of them, the artist, they really try to create a believable painting, um, while the other, the judge, will continuously judge that artist's painting and say, "Does this look real? Does this look fake?" And um, if it looks real, perfect, approved. If it looks fake, go back to the drawing board. 
And basically, they're going to keep doing this until they get smarter and smarter and can actually um, get to that end point that approved quicker. So this is what we talk about when we're saying that there is a learning in AI. And that's kind of what is the, um, the preface to a lot of those sci-fi AI movies. Um, Another one we have is the writers. We've all seen this. Uh, you know, we have ChatGPT for um, that uses this uh, this type of AI. You can think of it as the skilled writer, um, and it just creates convincing text based on its prompt. And then finally, the imaginators. We like to call them um, the dollies, the image-based uh, generative AIs. Won't really go too much into this because I think we've all seen it by now. But you give it a prompt, and it'll create um, some sort of an image or a realistic image, anything to match that. Yeah, just by speaking, it just blows my mind. All right, so um, here we have our typical campaign funnel. So now we're going to dive into how to use this for your marketing campaigns. So assuming that your market research is completed, which can also be done using AI, um, Basically, what we can do is we can use a myriad of tools and apply them to each phase of this funnel from, you know, awareness, getting your message out there, getting your brand out there, all the way to action or conversion. Okay. Over to Janet. Thanks, Royce. So, you know, we're at a fascinating crossroads where marketing meets technology like never before. So what are the big buzzwords that's redefining how we think about campaigns, customer engagement, and ROI? Artificial intelligence. But let's make one thing clear. Today's session isn't just about the jargon and the buzzwords, as we call this beyond the buzz. We're going to dive into practical, actionable guidance that we're going to walk you through how you can integrate AI seamlessly into your marketing campaign right from the drawing board all the way to analyzing the results. Um, so whether you're new, new to the AI scene or you're looking to take campaigns to the next level, you're gonna learn something new today. So we've got insights to share designed to power your marketing strategies in this evolving landscape. So put any questions that you have in the chat and we will answer them either in real time or an email later on, depending on how the time goes on this. So to start, I wanna define the campaign process that we'll be walking through with AI today. Um, so for the purposes of this webinar, we're gonna go step-by-step step into the funnel and all the way through analytics and reporting, which we all know as marketers is super important to your C-level when they ask you, what did you do and how did it work? We wanna make sure that we can answer those questions. So we're gonna start at the top of the funnel with content, then go into the middle of the funnel with lead magnets, then talk about um, also middle of the funnel, the landing pages and how to, how to optimize those for conversions and engagement. Then we'll talk about the bottom of the funnel, which is the thank you page where we can um, hopefully get permission to continue to contact these leads by getting them on a newsletter list, get them into email drip campaigns and into our workflows. And then again, we'll move into the analytics. So before we jump in, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to set up your chat GPT for your use. So if you have the paid version of ChatGTP, which I highly recommend at $20 a month, and it's saving hours and hours of time, to me, it's a $20 well spent. So you wanna make sure that you have in your settings that you've turned on the features, um, the beta features so that you can use things like code interpreter for your analytics and that you can use plugins as they're developed. But if you don't turn them on, they're, they're defaulted to not be turned on. So make sure you go into your settings and turn them on. And the other thing you wanna do is give the custom instructions. So over here, you can see the custom instructions that I have about marketing agency CEO with 30 years of experience. And then I go in to talk about where I work, who my target audience is, what my areas of expertise are, um, and then I follow that up with the tone that I want ChatGPT to respond. So I have professional friendly, I like my content to engage and educate. So now every time I use ChatGPT, it is writing from that perspective unless I tell it not to. So there's sometimes where, I, you know, for whatever reason, I want to have a different perspective. But <clears throat> because I already have this in my settings, I know that when I'm prompting it, it's going to be spitting out answers in that tone and with that perspective of somebody who's been in marketing for 30 years and targeting um, government contractors, agencies, associations, has this area of expertise. So I highly recommend that you 
pay for the version and that you set it up to speak in your voice. All right, so let's move into the content. So as Rose mentioned earlier, we're starting the campaign with the assumption that your marketing research has been done. So you've done, your audience has been identified, you have a tone messaging and brand guide completed and your keyword research has been done. We still like to use keyword research tools. We like Moz and SEMrush and some of the different ones. We just find them to be better right now at giving us keyword, um, comprehensive keyword research. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's start with the prompt that I used here. I have, I have a successful DCAA compliant SaaS product. My target audience is small to mid-sized government contractor company. A CEO, CFO, COO, I want to identify the titles that I'm going after. Please suggest 10 blog topics for my blog. Include a list of long tail keywords with each suggestion. And again, I'm talking about the tone here. Write in a tone that is professional and engaging. So I started out with Bard because it has some great features that ChatGPT doesn't have, like integrating with Google Suite and automatically citing sources. Um, so I prompted Bard to put all the information into a table, um, which you can see that it did. It has the topics left and right. Um, and then this is the great feature that you get with Bard that you won't get with ChatGPT is that you can automatically export it to Sheets. So I like to take all this content and put it into um, a spreadsheet. So this is great that this will do that for me automatically. That same prompt in ChatGPT gave me this. So you can see the difference. I did not prompt it to put it in a table, but you can see the topics and associated keywords. So I would take all this and put it into the same spreadsheet and refine it. And then I would take the keyword research that we had done and match it to the keywords that it's gave us to help us figure out um, which ones we really wanna use. So, um, with the keyword research we do, it has the minimum and maximum volume as well as the difficulty score. So we really know which keywords we wanna go after here. So once I put all of these things into a spreadsheet and then align it with my sales team, and I ask them which one of these topics would make good sales assets such as videos, white papers, eBooks. So knowing what your sales team's most frequently asked questions are is a great way to further develop the content and refine this content. It also helps foster collaboration between your teams. The other great thing to use this for is a topical map for SEO. Um, we are going to do a deeper dive webinar on SEO at another time, but um, this makes a great topical map as well. So once you've narrowed down your topics, you prompt AI to write an outline for the topics as you go. So here's the prompt I used. Please write a blog outline for first topic, navigating DCAA compliance, a roadmap for small businesses. I could have also prompted to just please expand topic one. Um, there's different ways to prompt, but we wanted to get to an outline. So here is the result from, Oops, this result from, I think this is a result from BARD. So keep in mind that AI algorithms perpetuate biases um, based on their training data. And so for this reason, I suggest you only use AI for outlines and then you use your subject matter experts to actually write the blogs. But if you do choose to have AI write the complete blog, make sure that you have it reviewed by an expert. And another good trick is to add links to other articles because that gives it more authority as being written by a human when you have links to other things. And that's also really good for SEO to have backlinks and internal links. So it will help it look more human generated by adding links. Now, as this outline continues at the bottom of this outline, it suggested um, additional resources that we are gonna use for lead magnets. Um, so I wanted to see. You can adjust any of these or expand any of these um, to better suit your needs, but we're gonna move into how we're gonna use these lead magnets. So you wanna keep drilling down your prompts and don't start a new chat because it's learning based on what you're prompting. So the AI still knows the product that we're talking about. It knows the audience, it knows the topical map. 
So right here, I could have prompted for any of the lead magnets from an ebook to webinar ideas to white papers. But for this example, I chose the checklist because we find them to be really highly effective. Um, and note here too, that I had to prompt it twice to get what I wanted. The first prompt I had was suggest a must have checklist to include as a downloadable asset with the blog. And the checklist that it gave me um, didn't include anything about a SaaS product or the advantages of the SaaS product. So since that's what we're promoting in this example, I gave it a second prompt saying I'm promoting a um, DCAA compliant SaaS product. Please use the checklist to include references to the convenience of using a SaaS <clears throat> that does most of this for you. And this is what it gave me. So I think this checklist did a really good job. It's not too much editing that's gonna be needed. Um, so now all I have to do is create this into some type of downloadable asset on the website and think of different ways to distribute it. Um, we have a content distribution checklist. Um, Savannah, can you throw that in the chat for people? Um, but for anybody who's interested in it, um, we have a distribution checklist that'll help you um, disseminate all your information. Okay, so social media is one of the best ways to distribute content. So note that the prompt at the top, um, I could have asked for more than 10, I could have specified which social channel, but important things with these types of prompts is the tone and the target audience. So this is how Bard presented the information. It gave me a headline, a body, and a call to action. And again, I think it did a pretty good job. I give the same prompt to ChatGPT and notice that ChatGPT loves its emojis and hashtags, both provided different calls to action. I love varying calls of action. I think learn more is way overused and does not engage people. So I love that it has things different than just learn more. Um, Again, you can prompt this further by asking it to create a tweet storm, I guess, is that called an X storm now? I don't know what they call it, but you can have it create tweet storms, LinkedIn posts, Reddit posts, you can have it right for the specific social media as needed. But once you have it to where you want it to be, put it all in a spreadsheet. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Canva. Um, but this is a really cool trick that if you take all of your social media, you put it into an Excel or Google spreadsheet and then download it as a CSV file and then bring it over to Canva. And down here at the bottom of Canva, it has a bulk upload um, feature. Um, and then you can upload it as a CSV and you take a... Um, a template that you have, in this case, this is an example of an art form template, but whatever templates that you've made in Canva, or you can use one of their pre-made. And you come in here and you make sure that you have a text box selected and you right click and connect the data and it'll pull all the data in and create as many individual posts as you have data for. So I've done this for as many as 25 and it's worked flawlessly. In this example, it's just generating five posts, but it'll pull it right in here and create these beautiful social media posts for you that your team can then go in or you can go in and customize even more, but it saves so much time. <laughs> so that is a great trick. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about in content is video. So I want you to think about how many videos you have watched this week versus how many videos you have created for our marketing campaign this year. Um, I love to ask that question because there's always a disconnect between how many videos we watch and how many videos we create. So based on all these stats on this slide, I want to really encourage all of us, and I'm preaching to myself here, to get better at creating video. And nowadays there is just no excuse. There is so much technology out there now um, that it's making it easier and easier to do. So one of the stats I do wanna draw attention to is the top one on here, that online video is expected to account for 82.5% of all web traffic, making it the most popular type of content over the internet. So again, not something to ignore in your uh, marketing campaigns. Okay, just gotta get this posted. And done. What the? Come on. I forgot it was National Avocado Day. Totally legitimate holiday. Let's see. 
I can definitely do this. I, I need a video script for social media. It needs to feature like five ways to use avocados and recipes. It's like, it has to be casual, right? It's avocado. That was freaking fast. Wow. If only avocados would ripen that fast. It's something with a ton, right? It's like, what's up guys? Let's start with a twist on guacamole. Serve this private head of citrus, fresh citrus. Boom. Gotta somehow get it to 60 seconds. Make me sound like a genius. All set. All right. Just gotta get this on social. And bam. What's up, guys? Can you believe it's already National Avocado Day again? <laughs> okay, so as you see by that video by Vimeo, it is so easy to create a video now. They have done a fantastic job with the script writing, B-roll creation, text to images, the auto editing, posting straight to social. So if you haven't already, check out what Vimeo is doing. It's really amazing. Um, now let's talk about short form video. So most consumers like short form video, as we all know, reels and short form video are really hot and important right now. Uh, it's an important part of your campaign and AI is making it really easy to create short term video. So let me introduce you, if you have not already heard, of getmunch.com. So with getmunch.com, you simply upload your long form video and it will distill it automatically into shorts or reels. Um, Munch extracts the most engaging contextual nuggets of your long form content and presents a coherent shareable clips. Your video is analyzed for topics, themes, and context. And then the AI generates specific social posts for TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube shorts. It auto generates, it does the ratio aspect and it creates um, captions and crops and does everything for you. So this tool is amazing. And again, such a time saver um, to just, you know, if you've done the work of creating your long form video, just put it into Get Munch and it'll auto everything for you. This is also fantastic because it allows you to splice these videos at different durations, different points of the video. That way it makes A-B testing a lot easier during your campaign, whether it's paid or organic. Great point. Okay. Royce, are you taking landing page or is that me? I think that's you. Okay, <laughs> so let's move a bit to the landing pages. So um, when, you know, as part of your campaign, you've created your content, you've created an asset, now you wanna have a place to drive people to, to convert them. So I use Bard for this prompt since it's connected to the latest version of the internet owned by Google who controls over 90% of search. So the prompt that I gave it was, I am creating a landing page for a DCAA accounting checklist for a financial SaaS product please suggest the H1, the subheader, um, calls to action um, for people to download a checklist. Um, I asked it to also include keywords um, and to create messaging for a thank you page with the suggested call to action for users to schedule a demo. So again, Bard is got these extra things that ChatGPT doesn't have. In this case, Bard can export the code automatically. Now you can ask ChatGPT to code for you, but it doesn't automatically include the code the way that Bard does. But if you look at this response it gave us, it has the H1, it has a subheader, call to action, keyword, and then included thank you messaging. So it has everything you need written for you, very minimal work on your end other than tweaking it. And this is the way ChatGPT responded. So um, very similar, different, you can kind of merge the two together, but both the landing page and thank you page aim to engage and educate, educate your audience. And the keyword is specifically chosen to capture the most relevant traffic, providing an SEO boost. Um, so again, this is just really great to have the language written for you. But let me introduce you to another tool that I really like to use for um, landing pages called Mixio.io. It is a website builder, but I find it to be really helpful for landing pages. So when you go to Mixio.io, this is how it starts, but it's your startup idea. So I put in this prompt of SaaS accounting product that helps small to mid-sized government contractors, again, always doing the target audience. And then what do I want them to do? They, this is the value proposition of what it is. 
So this is what Mixio spits out. Um, it gives you a headline, a subtext, a call to action, and then it included a um, testimonial, which is always great for converting traffic. So what I would do with this, um, I don't publish it on Mixio. I take this idea and I put it on our website and create our own landing page, whether we're doing the landing page on our WordPress site or we are HubSpot partners or whether we're creating it in HubSpot. But I love Mixio's idea generator. I think it just does a great job. It does create an entire one page um, website. So I'm just going to show you some screenshots of what the rest of the website looks like. And again, it's got um, H1 text or H2 text and subheaders. And I like all of these. I think, again, it just does a great job. And then this is what the bottom of the page would look like. And they always end with a testimonial, which is just a great practice if you have a longer form page like this. So um, highly recommend Mixio for landing page ideas. And then that moves into the thank you page. Awesome. All right. I will uh, hop into the thank you page. So as Janet had mentioned in the landing page section just previously, uh, so we were able to generate copy ideas for both a landing page and a corresponding thank you page. Um, so, you know, as we all know, don't stop your user flow at your desired action or that form fill. You know, don't forget about that thank you page. That's just an extra opportunity for you to uh, give a second touch point to your already highly engaged users. Um, so what you'll see here is that we, um, yep, oh, perfect, thank you. Uh, we took that language that was prompted by ChatGPT and Bard, and we were able to apply it to this thank you page. So uh, what Janet has showed you was the Mixio version. Um, so it was not branded just yet, but now this is what it would look like mocked up and branded. Um, we have a thank you page. Here's that second touch point, schedule a download. Um, so that is a great application for using that second touch point. All right. And then, so we're assuming that our campaign is out there in the wild. Uh, people have been filling out the form. Our content has been live. Um, that checklist has been floated out there. But we're not going to really know how the campaign performed until we really dig into the analytics, as we all know. And so, of course, there's a generative AI solution to this as well. Um, so let's dig into the campaign and see how it actually performed. So in this prompt, we use the paid version of ChatGPT again, ChatGPT 4.0, which has a data analysis tool. And the prompt that we put in, first and foremost, we're able to now upload files. So we uploaded a file called Blog Traffic 2023, uh, which basically just breaks down conversion rates and traffic to the blogs that we um, outlined in um, the earlier slides in the content development phase. And we paired it with the prompt analyze my report and give me insights into my content's performance based on conversions and organic traffic. Um, give me some recommendations to improve my content moving forward as well. And what it fed us, I'm not going to read through every one of these lines, but it fed us exactly what we had asked for essentially. Uh, so now we have insights on the best and least performing blogs based on organic traffic. Uh, conversion rates and days of the week even. Um, and then it also fed us recommendations for our next round of content so that we can continue to refine and improve, uh, such as which types of content resonated most with uh, the target audience, any optimization recommendations, such as, you know, they bring up A-B testing um, a lot, they bring up A-B testing calls to action, and then even which days um, to publish content, if that is available in um, your report. All right. Um, so that is, you know, more prompt engineering side of generative AI for data analysis, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other tools out there that can help improve data analysis. Um, and a lot of them are a lot more automated than uh, having to upload a file to ChatGPT or to something similar um, to ask for a prompt. So for example, um, you know, there are tools that automatically integrate with your different uh, reporting systems. We have 
even integrates with Slack or other project management or collaborative tools. Um, and basically what these can do is help to create customized dashboards based on your KPIs or what's most important to you. Um, so, you know, a few things here as well that um, ChatGPT can't do, and it's more tailored toward you, is it can automate analysts um, or analysis tasks. So freeing up, you know, time for analysts. Um, it also helps to uncover nuanced data patterns that traditional methods might overlook. And of course, it can help to create comprehensive executive summaries. So just make everything succinctly compacted into that executive summary, make it comprehensive, and make it easy to read. Um, so, oh, I was just going to add, the other thing you can add, ask AI to do is to analyze whether the data is clean, is there data missing for like, this is my goal of my data. I mean, you, you know, with natural language processing, it is like a conversation. So you can ask it to do things. And um, I, I love talking about the clean data and what data am I missing? So that's just another way to use it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and one other thing that's really cool is the uh, making predictions about future events. Um, so, you know, basically this advanced insight really just enables us to look ahead, look at trends based on that data that would probably take us hours and hours to parse without um, generative AI and just make sure that we're staying one step ahead. So less predictive, more insightful predictive. Okay. And so I just made a list of some of the ways that we have leveraged AI um, here at Artform, you know, the content, the predictive analysis, um, custom chatbots, SEO optimization, ad creation, personalization, social media insights. I just included this slide as we give you guys a slide deck. I just wanted you guys to have it. So I'm not going to read it to you, but that's that. And the other thing I wanted to touch on, because as marketers, we're often tasked with recruiting, and we have really found um, ChatGPT and BARD to be um, helpful assistants in that, particularly in writing job descriptions and creating screenings and creating video interview scripts. Um, so, you know, think about what what your process that your company is for recruiting and how you can follow the steps that we just talked about in a campaign for a recruiting campaign um, using job descriptions um, in AI. Um, we wanted to talk about some of the other tools that we use. Again, with time limitation, we couldn't get into everything that we wanted to show you, but these are some of our favorites. Um, the screenshot that I have here is from uh, Tango, I think it's .ai, um, but this will create SOPs for you. Your, um, so in this example here in the screenshot, I was trying to show somebody how to add a blog to the WordPress site using Elementor. So all I had to do was turn on Tango as I went through the process of adding a blog and Tango automatically turned it into a standard operating procedure, including all of the steps. And this is in you know, editable, I could go back in and get more granular on some of the steps if I needed to, but it just does a great job and it saves so much time. Um, and we have a knowledge base here at um, uh, Artform for our um, employees to use. And so we find creating these Tango videos and putting them in the knowledge base. So as we onboard new employees or somebody just doesn't remember how to do something, there is just this great resource of all of our um, standard operating procedures um, with Tango. We've used Loom video as well, but I find video isn't as useful as just um, the document that this creates. So we really like that a lot. Um, we also use Firefly's note taker. Um, highly recommend you check that out. It will take a recording of your um, meetings, but it also um, chunks things down into actionable insights and um, things that need to be done. So I really recommend that one's just been fantastic. Um, then Adobe has come out with Adobe Firefly. I think, I'm not sure if it's still in beta or not, but that is fantastic for image creation. Um, Jasper AI, AI has been around for a while, but that's really good for content creation. Design AI and Canva are really good with their AI um, tools. I think Canvas needs a little work, but I think it's just getting better all the time. So if you're a Canva user, pay attention to what they're doing with their AI tools. 
Um, and then another one I wanted to mention was HubSpot ChatSpot. Um, as I said earlier, we are HubSpot partners and HubSpot is always, of course, trying to stay in front of marketing and they have um, developed something called ChatSpot that um, integrates directly with um, ChatGPT, but it streamlines a lot of what we just walked through right directly into HubSpot. So it's a really cool tool and I recommend that you check that one out. And uh, before we move on, actually, Janet, I would just say that a lot of these can be integrated with one another. Um, I'm not sure how many of you use monday.com. That's our primary project management tool. They now have a beta AI um, function, which you're playing around with, uh, but a lot of these just integrate, makes teams and collaboration so much easier. Yeah, I think everybody has an AI. I saw MailChimp has an AI. Like everybody is coming out with an AI tool associated with their platform because they have to, you know, it's really, we've got to embrace this or get left behind. So it's really cool to see what's coming out. All right. So I wanted to touch a little bit on design and this was the first um, artificial intelligence text to image program that Heinz did. Um, so they ran a campaign about um, what does AI think ketchup should look like? And then, you know, the thing was that AI prefers Heinz just like humans do. So after using the advanced image generator Dolly um, 2 to search everything from ketchup scuba diving to ketchup in outer space, they found many of the results just look like Heinz ketchup bottles. They got their fans engaged and involved by asking them to share their suggestions. Um, and then the winning images were turned into social posts. Um, and so this was the first ever ad campaign created completely by AI. So I think they did a great job and way to get people involved um, with this really fun one. And I know we're gonna be seeing just a lot more of this. Awesome. And um, one of the questions in the chat, so Kaylee, absolutely. I think that there needs to be guardrails. There are some guardrails. Um, in the works, you know, as far as this goes, this is all practical applications for marketing. Um, so anything to just help prepare or propel our campaigns forward, but um, definitely, definitely agree about the guardrails needed for uh, what you put in the chat. Um, all right. And so did you know, so just a few stats here. Uh, did you know that companies that publish 16 plus blog posts per month get four and a half times more traffic than companies that publish zero to four blog posts per month. 60% uh, of marketers say that inbound SEO, blog content, et cetera, is their highest quality source of leads. And 80% of consumers say user-generated content highly impacts their purchasing decisions. So just a few considerations here. If you go to the next slide, Janet. And that's just our little plug for our upcoming um, webinar series or webinar coming up next week, um, the Thought Leaders SEO Playbook. So just taking generative AI and really um, honing in on it for an SEO strategy, as you saw on the last slide, uh, the importance of content, high value content, of course, and just how uh, you can leverage AI to help you with that. Yeah, and I think it's important to note um, for people who haven't heard that um, Google has with their new green initiative, has announced they're not going to be scanning websites as often um, to be more energy efficient. So really what that means is if your website is not evolving and putting new content out, it's not going to be searched and indexed. So it's super important to have a SEO um, plan moving into 2024. We also have, you know, um, cookies are going away in 2024. There's a lot happening um, in the SEO and advertising world that's important to stay on top of. Um, so, and we are doing that and we'll continue to bring that information. So, um, please sign up for our SEO playbook. Um, success at artformbsi.com is a great way to reach us. So please reach out if you have any questions and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I can't see the chat, but Savannah, is there anything in the chat that we should be paying attention to or draw our attention to? Um, Charlie O asked, what do you think about Claude.ai? Claude.ai? Mm -hmm. I am not familiar with that one. Not familiar with that one either, um, but it sounds like one of those um, AI assistants. 
So we can definitely look into this just compared to what we went over um, and get this over to you. Oh, you're welcome, Susan. All right. And um, Susan had asked, are the slides going to be available after this? Yeah. Are we sending? Okay. So we're going to send this along with the, the recorded video once yeah. we splice in the introduction. <laughs> uh, okay. Any other questions? Yeah. We went through a lot. So also feel free to um, digest this once you do look over it again and reach out with any questions as well. Yeah, and I'm going to save the chat so we can go through some of these more personal questions about people's specific websites and things. So, um, yeah. Well, if there are no more questions, we will give you all 15 minutes back in your day. And thank you guys again so much for being here. Awesome. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye.